Okay, hi. In this tutorial, uh, Christopher is going to show us some features of encoding correspondence, including descriptions of correspondence, but also the encoding of the letters themselves and various features in them using TIXML. Go ahead, Christopher. Thanks. Okay, uh, so what we have here is a fairly simple letter with fairly standard letter features. Uh, and it's already been transcribed and the line breaks match the line breaks in the facsimile here on the left. So what we need to do then is to just um, create some structure to make this conform to TEI's uh, letter structure. So the first thing we can do is start with the top. And on the top we have um, in TEI, anything that comes before the paragraph of the letter text itself is the opener of the letter. And the opener can contain lots of different things. It can contain uh, address, address lines, date line, and so on. Um, here, we don't have really a standard address, um, but we do have a place where it's coming from Chesterfield, as well as the date that it was written. And we have a standard salutation, my dear madam. So what we're gonna do then is we're gonna wrap these two bits of the opener in an opener tag. And now you can see that this is now looking more valid, but there's more that we can do. So as I said here, we have a date line which consists of the place and the date. So what we wanna do is further wrap this bit of text in a date line. And then if we wanna be more precise, we can also wrap this date in a date element. And if we want to be even more precise, within a when to standardize date. Now we just need to complete this bit of text here. As I said earlier, this is a salutation, my dear madam. And there's a tag in TEI for that called salute. And that completes our opener. We've got a date line element. With a, with a nested date element. Uh, we could even put a place name element in the Chesterfield if we'd like, and the, and the salute, my dear madam. And now here, um, what we've got left is the body of the text, which is just a single paragraph, and then the closer, where uh, there's a closing salutation and a uh, name signed off, um, and so the first thing we want to do is separate the paragraph of the text from the closing bit of it, which is here. So we'll just wrap that in a P tag. And just as we did with opener, we also want to uh, surround the closing elements of the text with closer tag. And there's still more that we need to do because um, there's some other bits of information here uh, that could be um, further distinguished. So with our kindest regards to all your circle, believe me, dear Mrs. Ross, and very faithfully yours, um, we can call that a salute. And I've got an extra salute here somehow. And then finally, the name. Thomas Hill, T. Hill is signed, Thomas Hill, and so naturally it's a signed element that we can use there. And again, with names, you can always surround with purse name if you'd like, if you're into prosopography. But this essentially con uh, concludes the letter uh, form. We've got an opener, we've got a paragraph, and we've got a closer, which also includes a salute and signed elements. That's pretty much it for letter structure. There's a lot more that you can do there um, in between, but this is the basics. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, however, is something else that you can do with TEI P5, which is the new Coresp desk module that was added recently. 
And what CoreSP Desk Desk does is it allows you to document additional features about the letter text that might not be apparent from transcribing the actual document itself. So you can do things like, for example, add a CoreSP action element. CoreSP action type equals sent allows you to indicate who sent it, which is the first name, Thomas Hill, where it came from, the place name, when it was sent. And then you can add a further CoreSP action. For indicating who received it. I need to close this tag while I'm at it. So I can also say that it was received by Marianne Rawson, which is not really clearly indicated anywhere else in the letter text. And I can even add a place name of where it was received, which is not also indicated in the, in the text. And this is in Sheffield in Northern England. And then uh, for a date element, I don't know when she received it, so I'll just say unknown. Our chorus best can take other kinds of elements, including very generic note elements or P elements, where you can just free write uh, some other description of the correspondence that is not captured elsewhere in the data. But this can be a really useful way of documenting the correspondences between correspondence. Uh, who sent stuff, who received it, where, when, and so on. And this just provides further semantic uh, and potentially networked information inherent in letters text. And that's all I wanted to cover for uh, letters encoding. Gabby, should I, is there anything else that uh, would be useful? I just have a, a very quick question about your opener. Um, uh -huh. Given that the date line um, and the salute and various other features on there could in theory be on the same line or, or could span over multiple lines. Mm -hmm. would, you, would you recommend putting an LB in there as well? Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. It could use an LB. Um, it, it kind of depends on the project, right? So like mm -hmm. some projects will put line breaks between these elements in their style sheets as a matter of course. Yeah. Um, and so sometimes I just think about those kinds of things being processed later. But yes, um, sometimes it's worth forcing a line break yeah. in instances like these where you don't have um, consistency. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, because the, 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 what the LB element is doing here is not saying, I want there to be a line break in my output. It's saying I, there is a line break on the manuscript that I'm transferring. Yeah, yeah. yeah fair enough. And yeah, that, and there might not always be. If, um, yeah, so that's a good point. Of, the the city and the date could have been on two different lines depending on who was authoring it. And yes, case, they're not. So so that sort of ambiguity might be. Yeah, right. yeah. No, great. Yeah, that's, really good. that's a good point. Yeah. Cool. Thanks very much. This is this is a feature that I was I was unfamiliar with. So yeah, I'm intrigued to to see this in use now. Look cool. forward to what the students come up with. Thanks.